Please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Amazing Spider-Man movie thoughts. I quite like the sort of change in George Stacy with the, you know, he's, he's standing there with you know, in front of his daughter and she's like trying to tell him, you, you have to help. Right from the start of the scene, I could tell what George was really trying to say. You know, Gwen is thinking that, ah, my father, he never listens, he always has to be right, he always has to be in charge, and he's not gonna do what I need him to do, what we need him to do, what the city of New York needs him to do. But George has already gotten it, and that, and he's trying to tell his daughter, you know what, I just need you away from here. I need you safe, and I'm gonna do what needs to be done. You know, that is just awesome. I really, really liked his character throughout this whole movie. I like how he, you know, after making fun of Peter, with these delicious, densely lines, you know, the, the whole thing about the, uh, Dr. Kirk Connors, do you know that he just wrote a glowing recommendation for college for my daughter? I read it. I cried when I read it. You know, just the, the whole, oh, just, I, I, I want to, you know, eat it up. It's, it's beautiful. And, and the, the Tokyo reference. I wish they had stuck to just one Tokyo reference, though. But, but yeah, you know, after all that, after getting, you know, Peter, you know, pushed out of the, you know, police station while he's, you know, screaming, No, Kirk Connors is the lizard! Silent Green is people! You know, etc., etc. He actually does, you know, turn and say, you know, get me all the information we have on Kurt Connors. You know, he is just, there, there is that, just in case, he could be right. And that's kind of the, the ideal, that's what we want police officers to be. You know, even if what we're saying sounds insane, we want them to listen because we could be right and there, there could be something that really needs their attention, you know. And I really love the police presence in this film. I, I think that that really helps ground, ground this in, a, in the real world, you know. And, and that makes it all the more effective when we see this guy swinging around and this other guy climbing buildings and trying to turn people into giant lizards. You know, but yes, with the, the police presence, it helps to really hammer home that Spider-Man is necessary to, to, to take out the lizard. You know, you have the scene with the police, you know, trying to take out the lizard, and they just, they throw everything they've got at him. They, they, you know, put so many holes in him, he's Swiss cheese, and he just heals, and you see that reptile open, and... He gasses them. I'm not enough of a science person. I'm not a science person, so I don't know if it really is just extremely easy once you have something that you know goes into the bloodstream and then mutates to also turn that into a gas, so he could just, I don't know. Anyway, as I say in the review, it didn't really make sense to me why he suddenly, you know, Suddenly he just thinks that the, the lizard thing is fantastic, that that's just, you know, I mean, at first he's like worried about, it. I mean, he's, he's going out to stop the Indian guy who suddenly disappeared. Did he die in the car? Maybe I missed something, maybe he did die. We never see him in the movie again, you know, the, the ominous Indian guy. It just, you know, he's... The, the last time we see him is in the car, the lizard, you know, that's, I love how they build up the lizard. First, you just see the, the claws and the hands, you know, grabbing at the, the Indian Oscorp guy. And Spider-Man kicks the lizard away, and then the lizard runs off, and Spider-Man, you know, saves that kid instead. I thought that the Indian was still alive. Anyway, you know, at, at first he's trying to stop it, and then once he becomes a lizard, he 
seems to just become, you know, at first he's just like mindless and just attacking, you know, that, that guy, the Indian, and then he turns back and then he's like, wow, I want to do that again. And, you know, hey, I should turn more people into lizards. You know, and, yeah, I don't know, maybe he wants a mate and, and he's not into bestiality, R reverse bestiality. But, yeah, it just kind of, but, but as I was in the review, at least they're consistent about it. For the rest of the movie, what does he want to do? He wants to turn other people into lizards, you know. He thinks that that's the next step in the evolutionary ladder, you know. And thus creationists had new ignorant ammo for the fight against us Darwinists. I thought that the him videotaping himself was just a t tiny bit weird because once he turned into, I mean, we, we see him sitting there filming and talking to the camera and like, ooh, I don't need glasses anymore, and you know, he's all talking sciencey, corrective lenses are no longer required, and then suddenly he just becomes a lizard and he seems to smash the camera, I mean, he certainly attacks the camera, and it just, maybe he was possessed by the paranormal activity demon, anyway, it just kind of, yeah, dude, why are you bothering with camera, Indeed. You know what? The lizard has a vendetta against cameras. He attacks his own camera, he smashes Peter Parker's camera. The dude does not want his picture taken. You know, you, you should think about the next time you see a lizard and you, you want to take a snapshot. You know, it's, it's, lizards have feelings too. I thought that the post credits, mid credits scene was pretty pointless. I don't know, is that supposed to be Norman Osborn? If so, why can't it just be sort of confirmed? I, I, I just didn't think it really added something that we would have otherwise missed. I mean, we already knew that there was, you know, that, that Norman Osborn was still out there. And I mean, it's not like this, you know, lizard research is going to, you know, turn him, in, him, him into the Green Goblin. I don't know, could it be someone else? If, if so, I'm, I'm not entirely sure who, and again, it's just kind of, I don't know, just thinking back to, you know, the, the recent Marvel movies, the, the Avengers, you know, both Avengers and the Avengers time movies. No, I'm not going to be spawning the post credit scenes, but I'm just saying, those post credit scenes, they led into the following movie. They, it was kind of, oh I can't wait to see that. And this is just, it's, it's a dude with slightly messed up hair talking to Kurt Connors in his jail cell and then he disappears in a flash and that's kind of it. And, and Kurt Connors is all like, oh no, don't, don't do anything to Peter, I'm, I'm good again. I, I was turned good again when the mutation was reversed. How exactly did that happen anyway? The moment he mutates, well, after a little while, once he turns into the lizard at least, from then on out, you know, until he gets unmutated. Yeah, wrap your head around that one. He is all, you know, ooh, everybody got, you know, everybody got to have this lizard thing going on as well. And then when he gets turned back, he's like, no, Peter, I must save you. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's good that he did, but yeah. I quite like how the lizard was smart enough to take care of Spidey's webs. You know, it's kind of... Well, when they fight in the school, you know, the lizard thinks he can just take out Peter and then no one will be able to stop him once he goes for the Gabani device or something like that. And, you know, Peter webs him up and then, he, you know, he escapes and then the next time they fight, he grabs his arms and he crushes the web cartridges, you know, smart. He, he really thought that through and suddenly, you know, that, that takes a lot of Peter's ability away. Man, I hope that debris didn't crush anybody down in those, on, on the street. I hope enough people were evacuated that no one was running around down there and was squished by that giant. When well, we saw in the trailer, you know, nice job spoiling the climax, guys. I actually kind of did think, 
ooh, Spidey's gonna grab that and, you know, prevent it. I, I get why he couldn't, but it kind of sucks for the, yeah. I liked George Stacy being badass in the... I have a feeling that Dennis Leary demanded that. You know, he's like, yeah, you want me in your Spider-Man movie? You better make me badass. You know, this... Yeah. I can't do a Dennis Leary impression to save my life. And, yeah, just him standing there going all T2. Just, yeah. And, and he, of course, says, you know what, Peter, I got this one. And, <laughs> you, no, you don't. You, you really don't. I'm just, no. I did kind of think that the, the liquid nitrogen was really going to, you know, put a stop to him, but just kind of only slowed him down. Yeah. I liked how Peter was suddenly, you know, in trouble down in the, in the sort of underwater because the web won't work underwater. And it makes sense, you know, the different, I don't know, I don't know exactly what quality of the water it is that messes it up, but it gets messed up and thus he, you know, loses a lot of his, you know, advantage. I did think that the lizard scratching him you know, just you know, kind of giving him a, a, a little love by leaving his paw print, just kind of saying, you know, I did that. That was a little weak. I, I feel like, I, I get what they were what they were doing. They needed Peter to show up at Gwen's like an idiot without the mask. He unmasks himself so often in this movie that once the police, you know, like, put you know, the, the handcuffs on him and unmask him. He still fights to, you know, to not be seen. I don't think it was to not be seen. I think he was just mad that someone else took his mask off. Like, it's, no, no, that's my thing. I take my mask off and show my face to other people. Not, you don't get to do that for me, you know. But, yeah, when, when he's... I lost my turn of thought. The, I feel like the movie kind of did, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if I think that it's good or bad that it didn't really give any closure to Uncle Ben's murder. You know, he never actually finds him. It, it was a good way to get him into the hero business, you know, that he's, you know, catching all these bad guys. And I really love how they actually have him crack jokes, you know, like he's supposed to. And they're actually funny jokes. You know, sure, the trailer gives most of them away, but yeah, you know, it, it that really worked. Now I remember my train of thought from before. Yes, it, my, my mind is a labyrinth. Be glad you are not trapped in there. The, the filmmakers needed him needed Peter to stumble into Gwen's place with, you know, the, the scratch, the claw marks there. I just feel like they could have accomplished that by him jumping away from Lizard just as Lizard is trying to, you know, rip his, you know, rip his torso apart or something, and he only, the claws just barely graze him, you know, and he ends up with those same wounds instead, you know. I like the sort of dilemma of, you know, when it's like, you know, I don't know if I dare be with you because, you know, I, I don't want to fear that you aren't coming home. I also really liked how Gwen actually had a role to play. She wasn't just, excuse me, the love interest. And don't even get me started on how relieved I am that she wasn't captured for the finale, you know, but she's actually a big part of why Everything works out okay. How is how is Peter gonna stop the, the the lizard if not for the antidote? That was literally how it worked out. Who gave him the antidote? Gwen did. You know, I mean, Peter told her to do it, and you know, kind of. But but yeah, if she hadn't been there to do it, and if she hadn't insisted on staying and getting the finished antidote, 
I don't know how it would really have worked out, you know. So, yeah, she's, I don't know, if, at least like 33 and a third percent responsible for the climax ending, you know, happily. I, I think that that's really good quality. And I liked how she wasn't defenseless. I mean, she hides from the, the lizard, you can't blame her for that. When he comes, she's not like, ooh, ah. She tries to torch him. You know, it doesn't work out, but... It, I mean, that still, you know, took some guts. And not only does she try to torch him, she grabbed the... I mean, Peter calls her and tells her, Get out of there, the lizard's heading there, and he needs the Galbani device. Those two things, you know, she's like, I'm gonna stay because the antidote's not done, and ah, it's the Galbani device, you know what, I'm gonna snatch that. Yeah, that, that's kind of badass, you know. She, she really made an effort to save people. I thought that the sort of the 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 way they left it off at the end with their relationship. I, I like that. That you know, he promises George, you know, I'll I'll keep your daughter safe by you know, not dating her, and then you know she figures that out because she knows her father well enough, and then you know afterwards you have that line about you know don't make promises you can't keep. But those are the best kind, and then she smiles, and then it ends, you know. I, I quite like that. And I think it's also just the, the right way to end this movie that, you know, kind of... The, the whole movie is about Peter's, you know... Peter, really, and to a slightly lesser extent, his relationship with Gwen. Basketball scene was quite funny. You know, him showing up flash. And the subway scene as well. It's just... It's really funny how he just kicks the crap out of all these people. And several times throughout, and at the very end, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to do, you know. It's just because it's, it's like reflex. And, you know, and that's how they, they kind of set up, he doesn't even really have to put in an effort, he doesn't, it's just, it, it happens, you know, and he, he doesn't even really have to think about it. And then when the lizard comes around, you know, the lizard just wiping the floor with him, and he's like, and, and we're like, this dude's tough. And he's really gonna be, you know, I, I think the film does a great job of making the lizard not only someone that only Spider-Man can take, but a challenge for Spider-Man to take. I love the heroic sort of aspect of the film. I love when he has to make a choice between, he, he there, there's, this, there's this boy trapped in a car and there's the lizard running away. And then, you know, we, before that we have Peter talking with George, Stacy, and George says, this guy's not out there protecting the innocent, he's out there kicking, you know, criminals' asses. And, you know, Peter makes that choice, and not only does he save this kid, but it's not just a matter of, you know, oh, I just you gotta use my powers, he actually has to... You know, it's it's a realistic, natural, natural. It's it's a it's a credible situation. You know, he's trying to get this kid out of there, and the kid is like scared. And you know, you know what? I'm gonna take the mask off. And you know, you know, what? you put the mask on. It's gonna make you stronger. And and this whole thing just really, really worked. I felt the car is really exploding and catching on fire and all that stuff. I, I, I know, I saw the gasoline running down it and all that stuff. I just thought it was a little much, but I don't know. I guess they felt they needed to add drama to the scene, and that was fine. And I really like how there's the payoff to that. To do, you know, we, we have, it's not just an, 
a random innocent bystander. It's you know, the the guy's face. It just you can really tell this guy. It it meant the world to him. You know, he's not even thinking about how he's just lost this car and he might not even have money to buy another one. Anyway, I'm sorry. I think of weird things sometimes. He. You know, he's really grateful to Spidey, and then, you know, when, when they get the evacuation, he sees Spider-Man on, on TV, and he's like, that's the guy who saved my son, and there's all this distance between. That's also, I love how this actually gives us, I mean, all four Spider-Man movies have Spider-Man swinging through the city. This is the first time we get a scene of Spider-Man swinging through the city, where it's a genuine sort of excuse me, dramatic sequence, you know, excuse me, in the others it's just kind of, you know, ah, he's out there and, you know, he will protect us, he, he will help defend you. And in this, it's actually, I'm here, I have to get to here, but I'm, I'm really beat. You know, he's, he was shot through the leg and, and beat by a lizard. And he had to fight off all these cops, you know, he's, he's beat, but he's the only chance the city has. He has to get through, and, and they just align all the, all the cranes so he can swing past, and he jumps, and he can't quite make it, and he, you know, grabs onto that one, and gets up and swings there. It's a fantastic scene. I suppose that more or less covers it. One thing I do wonder about is what on earth was going on in that first scene. Peter's four years old and he's like playing hide and seek with his parents and then he finds shoes that were put up so that it would look like someone was hiding there so I guess one of his parents was pretending to hide there so he... But it's not even like the parent jumped out and said boo 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 or ah, he didn't find me, or something, and then he goes in and, you know, his father's study, or something, has been, you know, run, all, everything's been run through, the, the, you, know, you can see where they broke in, broke the glass, and then he calls his father, and his father shows up, even though the parents were nowhere to be seen until that point in the scene, and then they just go away, I just, I don't know, I, I can't quite figure out, I, I guess they were trying not to be cliche about a family coming home and finding their home having been bur burglarized or something, but the scene is just kind of weird. I, I don't really know how. I could spend some time talking about how stupid Peter Parker is in parts of this, but I don't think I really need to say more than that Peter Parker's really stupid in parts of this. Him, him getting bitten by a spider, he didn't need to do that. He was just being stupid. If, if, if you see spiders and you're in a sciencey lab and you're in an area that you're not supposed to be, do you mess with stuff? The answer is no. You do not mess with stuff. Yeah. I didn't really feel like we got an awful lot of resolution or even meat to this sort of subplot of his father, the, the mystery surrounding his father, you know, basically all that came of that was the science equation which, you know, enabled Dr. Connor to use the serum. And I guess that Richard knew that that was going to happen, so he didn't tell it to Connor, but then he also didn't, you know, scribbled out, or at least write a warning note that, you know, I don't know, seems like the kind of thing that you might want to do in that situation. I do like how this hidden compartment of this briefcase, or whatever you want to call it, that, you know, was Peter's father's, that, you know, that it has this hidden compartment, and we've all already seen that his father had a hidden compartment in that, what was it, a drawer in his, in his desk, in his study, you know, in, in the opening sequence, so uh, that was kind of set up 
you know. And I also felt like the mystery kind of drew you in quite nicely in the beginning of the film. But but yeah, you know, it doesn't particularly lead to anything and he gets bitten by a spider and he shows Connor the you know the, the formula thing and or the equation and then nothing more is really done with the whole father thing. I like how they actually rephrased with great power comes great responsibility because we are a little bit tired of hearing it, you know, so instead it's just yeah. I also really felt like this this was a good Uncle Ben, you know, and I'm not sure I really minded the one in the Raimi trilogy, but just in this one it you know really worked. You know, that that thing that, you know, I'm sure that bully deserved it. So you gave him what he deserved. How does that make you feel? Pretty good, right? Yeah, I thought so. You know, that just really worked. One thing I didn't like about him was the really uber corny voicemail message that we hear. At first, for a while, it's not even very bad. For a while, it's completely... It's, it's fine. But then he says, you're my hero, Peter. The, the, and I love you part is not even terribly bad, but just, you're my hero. No. No. Just... Scratch it out. Try it again. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.